because you talked about also that you um, didn't get into trouble about being a drug dealer. This is at some one point you almost did. You went in front of the judge. You told him that you were going into the military, and he said to you, I will give you a second chance if you're going into the military, and then you did. What turned things around? Was it that decision to do that? Well, what turned things around for me was my son was born December 14th, 1987, and uh, 86, actually, and that turned my life around. I knew it was only two ways you could be. You're either going to be a hero or a street legend, and I don't want to be a street legend because a street legend, if you make it to 25, you're either going to be dead or in jail. So I made that decision to try to separate myself from running around in the streets and doing things that I, I regret. I asked you, Don, do you regret any things when you was young? When you're a teenager? Yeah, there are a whole lot of things I think that many people regret. Right, so I regret, but let's talk about the impeccable life that I have lived for the past 21 years as a New York City police officer, rose to the top of the biggest police department in the world. I have accolades. I've commanded some of the most violent priests in the city of New York. By the way, I'm the first African-American police commander in the 67th precinct since the inception of the, the NYPD. The transition to get there c could not have been easy coming from where you came from? This, the, the transition was very easy for me. Why? When you look at me, as you look at me now, I am community policing. All the stuff the scholars write about, about going into minor, minority communities and policing, I am that. You can't tell me how to go into a minority um, community and police. So it was very simple for me to go into minority communities and police. And that's one reason why I was handpicked to run the most violent housing developments or what people call projects in northern Brooklyn. I was handpicked to run the second most violent precinct in the city in New York. From because that, I came you know, from You that. know that. Is that why you think it's important to talk about it when you, when you went on the podcast or on the radio show? Is that why it's important for you to talk about it um, and to meet people where they are at their level so that they can hear? That it's very important. I mean, look at what's happening now. Eric Garner case. The Brown case in Ferguson, you know, I've been on many TV shows speaking about those things. When you look at them, not the Monday morning quarterback, the cops, but if I'm there, that's a whole different scenario. My question to Eric Garner probably would have been, listen, we're locking you up. Now, we could do this two different ways. Either you could come with us or we could bring help here. And then when help comes here, you know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's no secret when you get a lot of cops around. The testosterone builds up and it goes haywire. And I know that cop didn't mean to kill him, but that's what happens when you don't use verbal judo or conflict resolution, which the cops are not using today. You talk about your accolades, and I think that is well deserved that you should talk about that. But I also want to give you the opportunity to, to address everything that has been out there. You know, this has been a big story in New York City, right? People are calling you the drug dealing, former drug dealing cop. You've seen your picture on the cover of the paper and the headlines. Some people are saying you should never have been a police officer. Well, and you know what I say to those people? I should never have a second chance in life. Should I have been stuck in the street mm -hmm. where most people want you to be where you're on the lower end of the totem pole and not given a second chance? God gave me a second chance at redemption of my life, and I took it and ran with it. Let's talk about the 300 turkeys that I give out on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about every Christmas for the last eight years that I have my kids wait until I get back from giving out toys to less privileged. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the $3,000 that I helped raise to give Campus Magnet High School to the football team. And this is all without fanfare. But when you have irresponsible statements coming from the New York City Police Department, I'm the number one, I'm the number one villain in New York City now, really. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the almost 100 cops that's in jail right now. I've got to run, and I think, I think it's, you should people should not be judged entirely on their past because the past is awake. It's behind yes. you. It's and just one last thing. Let's just be you. very clear. My story is about uplifting these young men and women that feel like they have no you, hope. If you will give me the opportunity, I want to ask you one last question. I hate to give you a short trip here, but it's going to have to be short. I hear you talk about how you used to give your mother money. Your mom died. Yes. Do you think that she'd be proud of you now? My mom would be very proud of me. She would be very proud. I mean, I'm, I'm voted most unlikely to succeed <laughs> coming from where I came from. Yeah. So for me to go to the United States military, to be a police officer for 21 years, and the only reason I left policing is because I got hurt trying to subdue an individual, which they're not talking about. I had two major back surgeries, and I lost a disc in my back right. to lose the job that I love so much.